Good morning. Hi, good morning, hey, everybody. Guys. Hey, it's happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you Yay. and wherever you're watching from today. We hope you're having a great day so far. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. It's Saturday, uh, October 23rd. That's wow. Right. We're Sean and Allison McManus from Spoken Garden. If this is the first time you're you're here joining us, we're so thankful you're here. Yeah. And uh, we're here to help you become a better gardener. That's right. <laughs> so no so. matter what your gardening level or experience, we're just happy you're here because we have an awesome community of people that that show up almost every Saturday yep. whenever everybody's yep. so busy. And we love you guys. You have and great questions, great interactions. And everybody's so supportive, and we love that. That's know, what we, we want to foster. We're so, so, so thankful yep. for you guys and for everybody that joins in later in the replays and watches our, our lives. Yep. So thank you for being here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so uh, real quick, our topic today is unusual fall planted bulbs. I know. I am so, so excited to dig into yeah, this a little bit, you guys. It's going to be so awesome. There's so, there's so many bulbs that I know you guys are going to love as well that maybe you've never heard of before. Yeah, there's some that we've never heard of either. There are a couple, and I know. It's awesome to just learn about these new bulbs and like, oh, wow, well, we could have that I know. too. Well, of course, you so, know I want all of them. Nah. <laughs> so we, we still have a little window of planting opportunity as well because yep. Sean and I um, here, we live in uh, Zone 8B here in uh, Tacoma, Washington. Mm -hmm. and we actually haven't got out and planted our bulbs yet. We, um, uh, we, we got still a couple here. A we got a couple here. So, what do we got? We got 50 tulips to go and 50 daffodils. I know. So. Well, and then we have a new, uh, we just got a box uh, yesterday or the day before from High Country Gardens. Yes. Which we still need to open up because we kind of forgot what we ordered. Yeah. I don't know. There might be a couple of the unusual bulbs in there but, as we were planning. But aren't these beautiful, you guys? Know, look, look at these. these. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So. So. It's always so exciting. It's it's yeah. kind of like, you know, you got to do all the work now and then wait for months until they bloom. But when they start blooming in the spring, it's like the most oh, exciting thing. It's like your yard wakes up. I know. It's I just love like, it. plow. And it's just, it's amazing to have that feeling and see all that color and beauty. Yeah, I know. So. And it's just, I don't know about you guys, but we, we run around our yard and, you know, check almost every day to see the progress of how, you know, how high the bulbs or how tall the bulbs have risen out of the ground and we're we, you know we what's the status do. like what do they look like <laughs> oh they grew, pictures they like, grew maybe half an inch yesterday i know wow. it's ridiculous <laughs> but we're obsessed and we love our plants yep. so yep and we love gardening too so you're here because you like or love gardening and so we're here to talk to you today about unusual fall planted bulbs and take on any garden questions you might yeah definitely you might have Definitely. So, we yeah. love hearing from you guys. So far, um, some of you are starting to chime in in the oh, chat. Yeah. We've got, um, good morning to Liza. Morning, Liza. Hi, Liza. Good hey. morning, Sherry. Oh, morning, Sherry. Sherry, we're, we, can we come with you, Sherry? Well, She's boarding her plane to Cancun right oh, now. Oh, you're killing us, and Sherry. And we want to oh, come with you. Man. Can we, like, just, you know, just pop us in your, yeah, your suitcase? Yeah, can or... we be a stowaway? Oh, you're going to have such a fun trip. Can't <laughs> oh, wait. Thank you for watching, yeah, by the right? way, on your Thanks way to Thanks for being here. Amazing Jeez. trip. And, so and cool. have a great trip. I know. Have an awesome trip. Hopefully yeah. you'll see some whales. You'll have to let us know. I love, we, we love oh, whales. Yeah. Love. Wow. I get so excited and seeing whales. Um, okay. So yeah, we, um, we've had, you know, it's been a great week. Hopefully you guys have had a really fun, productive week. It's mm -hmm. been kind of a mix of like dry, cool fall weather and then rain. Just the deluges. Just downpours Just, and of rain. And some wind pushing through Oh yeah. We had here, some so. crazy wind storms yep. around here. So yeah. You know, maybe you're kind of seeing the same weather. You know, it's fall. It's a little unpredictable yeah, uh, for right. some of us. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, uh, it's beautiful to see all the leaves and all the trees are just yeah. bright oranges and yellows yeah. and reds. It's just such a beautiful, it's one of my favorite seasons, yeah. I think. I know, the change of color and the coolness and the crispness in the air, it's amazing. So, mm. yeah, we, we love it. So. And bulb planting. Yay. And bulb planting. So, um, we, so. yeah, so we're going to be talking, um, we had a poll out earlier this week. Oh, In fact, yeah, yeah. let me, um, pull up the picture here. Yeah, like, that was so cool. So, okay. So we asked her, and thank you to all of you who chimed in on the community, uh, poll that we put out. Oh yeah. So the question was, are you still planting bulbs this fall? So we're just kind of, you know, wondering about that. We are. So yeah, we haven't started <laughs> yeah, it. Obviously. So we asked, we had four options. So we had, yes, I still have more bulbs to plant. And 59% of you, which was the highest rating, said, yeah, I still have a lot to plant. Yeah. And that's, yeah, we definitely fit there too. Nope, I'm all finished planting. About 28% oh. of you said, oh, you guys are said, awesome. You're already, already done. Got it done. You're way oh, ahead. You guys are awesome. 0% um, wow. said, not yet. I'm still deciding if I want to plant fall bulbs. So nobody's in the like, I don't know yet. You know, kind of pretty decisive. Yeah, group everybody's of like people. yes or no. That's cool. Or That's no good. bull planting. Um, no bull planting for me this year. And thirteen percent of you said that, and oh, that's fair. Okay. You know, because yeah. maybe you have like, like, 
a perennial, you know, I'm thinking like daffodils and things that always come back. They're really reliable every year. You know, you don't really have to get out and do anything else. Or you've already planted all your bulbs. You're out of space and what you have yeah. fills in because they keep multiplying. You're doing a great job in your garden. I know, right? So, yeah. so the, the so only really cool. the bummer, we've talked about this before. We had a whole other bulb um, live a few weeks ago. Um, and we talked a lot about how we love tulips, but sometimes it's su it's such hard work to get those in the ground, and then they're not guaranteed to come back every year. Yep. So it's su such a letdown sometimes. Well, so and you gotta you gotta fight with the squirrels and the other critters that right. like to eat eat your tulip bulbs. I know. So, you know. Yep. So the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Um, so, so so did somebody else? Yeah. Um, good morning oh. to Delphina. Delphina's joining morning, us. Delphina. She says um, football season is done. Oh. Um, she said her team came in third at nationals in Austin last weekend. So oh, now okay. she could, she's back to Saturday morning gardening. She's happy to be here and has lots to catch up. <laughs> That's fun. Lots of catching up to do. Right so good. we're so happy you're here, Delphina. So up in the um, we have a poll going right oh, now. If you're yeah. just joining in. Um, again good or hi to you it might not be morning but yeah. we have um, a question up have you planted any bulbs other than tulips and daffod or daffodils this fall and 75 percent so far said no no so wow. just daffs and tulips um, okay. tried and true yeah, can't go wrong 25 yeah. percent of you said yes which is super cool too because that means you're very adventurous and you're trying some new stuff and that's always a good thing well and you so. think you know when you um Tulips and daffodils are the most probably highly marketed fall planted bulbs, mm. right? I mean, they're beautiful. Highly recognized. They're highly too. recognized. Yep. Um, they're grown all over the world. I mean, there's mm -hmm. that's what you normally see. That's what's marketed. You'll find those in the box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and, and mm -hmm. online. But there are so, so many other fall planted bulbs. Yep. So we're excited to share those some yep, of those that's, options. That's with what you we're going to share with you today. So. But uh, first off, maybe we should get into some of our questions from our viewers um, before we get into those unusual bulbs. So Okay, so um, yeah, let's get started. So we have some questions from the past couple weeks. Um, this one comes from, let's see if I read this right, from Four Stry Peepaws. Um, <laughs> Sean wrote this down. So um, how, to winter, how to overwinter potted mums. This was a video from last year. The question is, would you have taken cuttings from those plants before they had the haircut? Uh, and it's a really good question that because, good question. Uh, you know, timing when you want to take any cuttings, especially temp, uh, stem cuttings, that timing is very important. And so um, for the mums, yes, we could have taken um, some cuttings from those plants before we gave them the haircut right after they were done flowering. It, so for the timing on the mums, uh, yeah, you, you take you can take the cuttings uh, generally, after they're done flowering, it's it's hard to do that though because well, it's not hard to do it, but it's it's usually something you wouldn't do after t uh, the flowers have actually flowered because they've already gone through the reproductive process. They're starting to shut down a little bit. That vigorous growth that usually happens before they flower um, has already passed, and so and when you take stem cuttings, you want to look for that vigorous growth. You want to look for the the stems that are that are new, it's that newer wood, it's that bright green uh, stem uh, color on it, and there are no flowers on it too. And that's important because when you take that tissue, um, you, you wanna make sure that the tissue doesn't have a flower on it because when it doesn't have the flower on it, it's still vigorously growing. When that stem starts to flower, it has a bud developing, it's starting to switch over to its reproductive phase and all the biological systems within that plant are switching over to that too. So. Um, and that's important because when you take the cutting and it's got a flower bud on it or it's starting to flower, uh, that, that reproductive biological phase makes it harder for that stem tissue to react to actually form new roots when you want to form the new roots on your new stem cutting. So it's really, it's really a good idea to take your stem cuttings from non-flowering tissue and stems. But you can always try this. You can always let your, um, let your mums flower or if you have a new bud um, developing on a stem uh, from this year's growth, uh, cut that bud off, just get rid of it, right at the tip top, uh, remove it, and then take that stem cutting, take your cutting, that four to six inches or so of stem, and uh, try it out. See, see if it takes root, there's a chance it will. But once that flower opens up and it reaches that, that reproductive phase, your chances of getting uh, roots from the, on that stem 
uh, decrease. So it's not impossible because you can always use different root hormones and some yes. different methods, um, but it's it's a lot lower. So yes, we could have taken those uh, stem cuttings. We could have taken stem cuttings after it flowered, but our rooting rate would have been a lot lower. Yeah, so. we want you, you want to increase the odds, right? That yep. they're gonna if you're gonna go to the trouble of doing that on the yep. plant, you want to make sure they root. Yep. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. I think so. So, All right, yeah. cool. So cool. Thank All you for right. Thank you for the question. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, okay, so next question comes from Emma Lemke on um, transplanting lavender plants from the front yard bed redesign. Uh -huh. So we, really quick side story, we had some lavender plants that were in the wrong place. That was totally my bad. Put them under a tree, kind of in the shade. It's okay. What a mess. So They survived. They survived, barely. They were kind of growing goofy and whatnot. They were so, stretching, yeah. but they were okay. So I planted those years ago before um, before Sean moved in, mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so Sean and I moved those, was that last year or two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Uh, they're thriving and looking really good now. So that's what that video was about. We were moving them. Um, so Emma says, thank you. We are preparing to buy our first house. Congrats, Emma. That's so cool. Really cool. Yeah. And I want to take my lavender with us. Oh, I totally can relate to that. Um, she said, mine is quite healthy and I just don't want to leave it in an apartment I don't live at. She mm -hmm. wants to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Emma, thank you for asking the question. I'm this about is that. a great question. You should, if you want to take the plant with you, you should totally take it with you. Fall is a great time to trans oh. uh, transplant perennials. Good point. Um, and so what you want to do, uh, w if you have these, does it say, did she say if they're she in a pot? She said she lives, it, it didn't say. I'm kind of thinking it's an apartment, maybe she's on the ground level or something and has them in the ground. Okay. Whether you have it in the ground or in a okay. pot, uh, you want to make sure that, if you have it in the ground, you want to take as much of the root system with it as you can so it's not a stress in its new environment once you replant it and transplant it into your new yard. Um, so saying that, uh, depending on how big your plant is, go out, go out on that root system from the base of the plant, from what you see above the ground there, uh, from its from its crown area, its grow area, and go out, maybe go out about six inches, go out about a foot. Oh, if you sense. think you need to go out a little bit further from that, from the very edge of the foliage, then do it. Um, it's always better to go further out and then work your way in to see where those actual roots are uh, are coming from. Excuse me. Maybe go out about a foot and a half. Try that. P start going around, take a shovel, dig around the perimeter, about a foot and a half out um, around your plant. Start popping them up and see where your roots are at. Gather as much of that root system as you can. Um, when you transplant the plant, before you even start digging, make sure it's well watered, it's healthy. Um, you don't see any other types of pests or diseases or anything on it because that can influence your plant survivability in your new garden. If you do see that, just act accordingly and try and treat any disease or pests on it uh, as best you can. And then um, that'll let you know too, once you get the plant into your new yard, you need to baby it a little bit more and keep an eye on it a little bit more than you would um, if it didn't have those pests and diseases. So it can survive. So um, yeah, and follow the best practices for transplanting a plant. Gather that whole root system, put it in a tarp or a pot, get it over as fast as you can to your new yard, dig your hole where you're gonna where you're gonna plant it. Dig it twice as wide as you would deep, so you have um, that plant has the ability of its roots to get out into the new soil that you're gonna plant it in, in the garden. It has an easier time getting out in that soil and establishing its root system. Um, also, site the plant uh, correctly, meaning if you have lavender, you're gonna need full sun. It's gonna need to be well draining soil. And it's, you're gonna make sure, you're gonna have to make sure that it, it doesn't stay wet all the time. Even well draining soil, if it stays wet all the time for lavender, it can start to rot. It doesn't like a lot of that. So you need to have really well draining soil and make sure there's no standing water at any point. Um, and then just uh, make sure to, uh, depending on where you live, you might wanna add some mulch around that root system um, to insulate those plant roots and help regulate that temperature of those roots. So the so those roots can get established faster and the plant can get established oh, that's faster. That's good advice. So yeah, so just follow um, general practices for transplanting plants. Fall's a great time. Keep the stress levels down on your plant. You're gonna do great. That's really, that's a great question. Well, okay, I'm actually thinking for Emma's sake, um, mm -hmm. because I would be worried if I was a newer gardener and I'm like, I wanna take this plant, like what about traveling in the car? Like what would be that's, the best way to get it in the car over to where your new location is? Um, good question, yeah, good follow up. Maybe I a think, tarp? Uh, a tarp or a pot, whatever you can put it into. And then if you're putting it in the back of a truck, 
which isn't a bad idea, but depending on how fast you're going to go, um, you could it could uh, dry the plant out. It could damage yeah, the leaves yeah, and stuff true. a little bit because with that wind flow, um, the leaves can get dried out a lot faster, especially if they're not in a ground or have uh, have a lot of moisture around those roots to replenish the moisture in those in those leaves. So if you're in a back foot truck, put it up next to the cab. Put it up as close as you can to the cab so it gets a little protection from the wind. <clears throat> That's a good idea. Um, if you're going to put it in the car, just gently put it in there, depending how, on how big the plant is. Go roots first. So so it, it kind of goes in, if it's like this, it kind of goes in this way, and then get it situated nicely and set it down and get it get it stabilized so it doesn't move around in your car too. And then if you don't have a, a truck, you know, which a lot of us don't, like just put it uh, maybe in a, in a tarp and just kind of carefully put it in the back of your trunk or wherever you need to go, uh, right? Trunk or hatchback, it just depends on how you're gonna yeah. do it, yeah. I'm just thinking ahead, you know. I And Emma, I can completely relate because in the future, Sean and I already know we need a lot more space because we're we're out of a lot of garden space and we want to move to a different neighborhood in the future mm -hmm. and i'm looking around the yard i'm like we're taking that plant we're taking that plant all those plants so it's like i don't want to leave anything behind either i already know this preparing sean now I'm, i've been informed he's been informed there's a lot of plants that we're taking with us so yeah so thank you emma yeah i hope that was helpful emma and congrats on your new house yeah, that's really, really exciting and we can't wait to hear from you Please let us know um, how the plant's doing, and if you have any other questions, let us know. That's super fun. Let's check in with the chat, you oh, guys. Yeah. Let's see. Look okay, so really we have busy. to say hi. Real Jingy's here. Hey, Real Jingy. Hi, Real Jingy. Hey, Real Jingy's like all teched out. He's watching us on his phone, but then he's also got his Roku streaming from another phone. So he's kind of wow, got awesome. all kinds of stuff going on. So right we're on. just happy you're here. And yay. yeah, yeah, we missed you, buddy. I know we did miss you. Um, Fam, Ty. Oh. Hi, Fam. Um, hi, fam. Fam's here. She said good morning to everybody. Uh, Mark Pando. Good hey, morning. Mark. Morning, morning, Mark. Mark. Mark's, oh, this is fun. Okay, so Mark says, Mark always has awesome plant ideas and suggestions. <laughs> it's always fun to hear what you're planting. Mark always likes to plant anemones, hyacinth, crocus, um, Asiatic oriental lilies, trumpet lilies, sometimes rubrum too. I don't know, what's rubrum? Not sure. I'm a, I'm a noob, I don't, have know to look that one I don't know. Up. Nice, Mark. He said the only thing he wishes, um, yeah, he has to worry about cooling them since winters are just not cold enough where he is in, yeah. in Texas. Yeah, it sounds like a cold treatment. I was That's always wondering about that. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, Mark, let us know how you do that. I would love to hear, how do you, do you just yeah. put them in a, you know, in the refrigerator for like a certain period of time? Maybe like a freezer wrapped up or yeah. something. Yeah, how do you do your cold treatments? Some people do it different. That's so really cool. It would be fun to hear from yeah. some of you how you do that. Yeah, and especially in Texas too, um, depending on your elevation, if you're up high, you might get that cold treatment naturally because That's of true. elevation, but yeah, being down low, if you're in the in the lower areas, um, yeah, interesting. That's so. that's really cool. Cool. Okay. We don't, yeah, we don't have to do that here in zone uh, eight. No, no oh, we we're, we're in zone eight B, um, but we're in a cooler, cooler, like, yeah, climate area. Yeah, we don't have to do that. <laughs> um, we're lucky. I, yeah, I do. We're very lucky with I'm, our I'm climate. I'm thankful, here. very thankful for our climate every day. Yep. Um, let's check in on our poll oh, right now cool. and see what, what's going on. So Double the votes. Still That's have awesome. no's in the lead. Um, have you planted any bulbs other than tulips or daffodils this year? And most everybody's saying no so far. So that's that's fun. I mean, we, that's really interesting. we that's always cool. plant daffs and tulips, but it is fun to venture outside of that. And yep. again, hopefully today you'll get maybe some new ideas. Yep. Okay, so should we move on with some questions? Sure. So the next question comes from SOS, I think is the account, um, how, and on our how to stake dahlias video. So yeah, dahlia season's kind of over for a lot of us. Well, but for us, but not for other, other people. people. Maybe Might not. Might be still going strong. I know, I know, I'm so sad. I miss our dahlias already. Mm. So any suggestions on how I can keep my dahlias upright? Um, SOS asks, I have hard, rocky, shallow soil and my bamboo stakes won't stay in. Um, it's been really windy. So any staking suggestions? Yeah, so then this is a really great, a great question, question because if you have really hard, hard soil and you can only go down maybe a foot, maybe not even that, um, you know, it can it act, actually you can hurt yourself if you're trying to pound in either stakes or something into a really hard, rocky soil. You can actually hurt your joints and your shoulders and stuff. It's not fun. Um, I've done that. Yeah. And so um, something to think about is maybe rigging up um, a type of trellis system based on where if you have any raised beds, your dahlias are in raised beds, you can rig up a trellis system with wood or pipe using pipe, can't, pipe clamps or something like that off the ends, off the, off the corners uh, in those areas of your bed. Rig those up, get those stationary, and then start throwing twine or rope 
to get a trellis system to support things. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to, if you don't have um, raised beds, you can actually make uh, little platforms. Um, and they just, they can be on the top of the ground or they can be a little bit below the ground or you can put them, you, basically they can be a piece of wood or something that's actually flat that you can then build off of to build your support structures for a trellis. And if you have a flat piece that's kind of open, you can put a rock or uh, maybe a, a cinder block or something on top of that to keep it down in the oh, wind, yeah. keep it stationary and hold up your plant. So you would just need about three, two or three points, maybe four points with those flat surfaces then build up from that off that platform, that surface, and then uh, put your stakes, throw your rope up in your twine and there you go. That's, that's two ideas so you don't have to penetrate down into the ground because yeah, the last thing you wanna do is pound and pound and pound on a stake or pull um, to get into the ground and not get anywhere, uh, destroy destroy your posts uh, and hurt your body. Um, you don't want to go down that road. So those are two ideas that I would I would suggest you do SOS. I think that's a great. I know that's so, so hard when you don't have that rocky or you've got that rocky soil. Sorry yeah. that you can't. You know the stakes just don't go down deep enough. Yeah, you might get six inches, and then it's just boing boing boing, and your your actual stake is actually actually bouncing off the hard pan or the rock. And you can see it just bounce yeah. every time you hit it. It's frustrating. Well, and it makes so, me wonder, how does the plant even survive? Because the roots need to get deeper than probably the stakes can go. So for yeah, some of those plants. Some of the plants, they can. It depends. Plants can adapt. Yeah, that's um, true. They kind of grow out maybe yeah, instead of. Yep, yeah, they'll grow out and they'll, they'll adapt, especially if you build the soil up from that point up. Yeah. You can always build the soil profile up from that point. Um, but usually a soil profile that you've built up won't be as stable as giving penetration down into the ground to the native soil. So that stake, if you're, if you're just putting into the, uh, the built up soil, it'll easily get knocked over because that soil's so loose. That's what, so. you know, this reminds me, Sean and I have a project coming up. I don't know if we mentioned it. We have a bed mm -hmm. in our yard. It's a pretty long, uh, fairly full sun bed. We treat it like full sun, right, in our backyard. I'm, I'm not sure. He's not sure where I'm going. About. Well, um, we have this bed that we need to kind of redesign and build up. When you said build up, I was like, oh, yeah, that bed in our backyard. Oh, we have yeah. this row of beautiful plants that just some of them are really not getting big enough like they should be. And we you're talking about the planting strip to the right. Yeah. Of the gravel path walking. Out yes. The, the one with our hot lip salvia That's that it. we love. Okay. And that seems to do OK. But yeah, talk about hard pan. Oh, my gosh. It's probably how how deep do you think our actual like soil is before it's just like hard pan five maybe six inches it's so shallow maybe maybe and that's including the mulch i mean it is so oh, that's shallow that's a good point yeah. so i mean yeah so we need to we need to update that and build that up and that's going to be a project we'll show you that yeah though. i'm excited so. because we um, we're actually going to further extend we're going to build the bed up and like build the soil and then we're going to actually take out more of our grass in our backyard and make a bigger bed because <laughs> we we literally have so many more plants to get in the ground oh and we're gosh. running out of full sun space. We are really so we, running uh, out of st yeah, space there. We're kind of, it's kind of fun to be creative though and make that space. It's funny, I just glanced at the chat and mm. Stromy53, which, hey. hi Stromy, so Where's glad Stromy? you're here. Stromy was just saying, um, Stromy discovered that most of her yard does not have direct sun. So it's kind of like- Oh, you have an interesting challenge. You know, it's like when you, when you have those challenges that you have to, you, you want to work with, you have certain plants or whatnot, you can be a little creative sometimes. Yep, you, yep, you need to be, but also there's a lot of plants that'll grow under um, not full sun conditions. There's a lot of options. And so that makes it fun because then you That's have a true. really unique garden compared to probably a lot of other your neighbors. I know. So, there are so many beautiful shady plants, yeah. partial shade. And actually, I love that you brought Excuse that up me. because a lot of the bulbs that we're going to mention later in a little bit here, a lot of them I was really excited because they are more of a partial shade to partial sun, kind mm -hmm. of a couple full, full suns. But really, the, I feel like the majority of the bulbs we were looking at Mm -hmm. We're more of a partial shade. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, they love that. They, they've either they, they've they've done their adaptations naturally, but then they've been bred also to have that range of growing conditions, and it's it's fun That's to see those. Really fun. Yeah. I know. So sorry, we're off topic from how to steak okay. dahlias, but okay. just wanted to say that, and we're so excited that some of you are still popping in the chat. Let us know if you're here. Take our poll yeah, or kind of like weigh in if you you know just to kind of see where we're at with our bowl planting mm -hmm. um real quick coming back to uh what we mentioned earlier mark mentioned that he said what he does to cool his bulbs down this is his um plan he puts them in the fridge in a brown lunch you know like paper bag mm -hmm. but he makes sure that there's no fruit inside right so the no the ethylene gas doesn't escape yeah. and like 
Yeah. You don't want anything blooming early, right? Nope. So that's a really cool. good plan, and um, awesome. I'm sure that's probably for a few weeks, right? Yes. Probably. Yeah, it is for more than just a few kind weeks. Kind of let those, yeah. let those so do awesome. their thing. Awesome. Good job, Mark. Yeah, that's yeah, a right great on, plan. Yeah. Um, let's see. We've got Stromy. Yeah, we said hi to Stromy. We're so happy Stromy's here. Oh, Sharon LeFay. Hey, Good morning, Sharon. Sharon. Oh, Sharon just planted some snowdrops for the first time. Ooh, so that, cool. Oh, they're going to be so beautiful this spring. Yeah, tell us. Let us know when they come up how they look and how they're doing. That's going to be so Because we don't beautiful. have any in our yards, so... I think we ordered some though, didn't we? That might be in our order. We can't. We literally can't remember what we ordered. We're so this is ridiculous. We get excited, we order things, and then we move on to like five other projects. We completely forget what we ordered, and then all of a sudden we get it. It's like, oh, surprise! I Yay. mean, we could look at the email <laughs> receipt or go track it down somehow, but it's well, just like we could go open the box, but we can't do that right now. It's kind but. of fun when you just get a surprise in the mail, right? <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's see. We have, I think, one more question from Maria Gill on Cordy Line Care. Mm. We love, love, love our false dracenas, also known as Cordy mm. Lines. Um, Maria says, I love them too and propagate from my backyard. Cool. Um, love the red ones. I would like to keep them bright red. So I guess, is that kind of more, maybe a comment, but a question, how do, I, how do you keep them bright red? Yeah, and it's, it's, I'm glad you asked this question. Um, Sorry, Maria. Uh, Maria. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something we would like to see too. The way to keep them red is to keep them actively growing and growing new, new tissue and, yeah, just keep them healthy. The reason ours are red, at least, the ones we showed in our... Um, oh, I love ours it, too. In, in our video oh. that we have, is because that's the... That's how the immature, the new growth looks on the ones that we specifically have. Not all of them will do that, but the ones we have, and there's other varieties out there, maybe the ones you have too, Maria, um, that new growth, that immature growth, it's red. It has that brightness to it. But once they get like a year or two older, they turn green. The pigment in on those leaves, on the on the strands, those huge fronds, if you want to even say that. I mean, they're just, they're like huge grasses, right? They're, they're amazing plants they actually turn and revert back to green when they get more mature. And we have these out. Maybe we should do like an update or something on them. I don't know. Maybe we can, post, it, maybe we can post about it on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. But, um, and uh, we can show, maybe in the, uh, oh, in the YouTube comments, we can show the community on a, on a, uh, a picture. Oh, can we, we do can that? Show that? Yeah, sure. Can we do pictures in those? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll do that. And That'd we'll take a picture and we'll show you how that on, on the, uh, the leaves basically at, at the base, um, they've all turned this bright green or this dark, this, you know, this nice bright green. And then the new growth, it's still red, but that's because it's still the juvenile, uh, the juvenile growth. And as the plant keeps progressing and growing and growing a little bit taller, a little bit taller, that red basically migrates, you know, keeps going up and up and up because that's the new growth area of the plant. And then down below, uh, it's, it reverts back to green, the green pigment in the leaf. That's so cool. So that's uh, that's how you can keep them red, is keep that active growth, that juvenile growth uh, going, and keep them nice and healthy. You'll continuously see that red at the top portion of the plant, oh, and but unfortunately not at the that. bottom. Portion I know because the, the, so, the aging. Yeah, you can't really control that. So I love yeah. the variation of the reds and the greens though in the one plant. I love how they mm -hmm. age and change color. I just think. They're so beautiful. Oh, and yeah. Those of you that are able to grow them in your your zone, or maybe you have them in pots and you can like move them inside. Oh yeah, yeah. Because a lot ours, of people do. Because ours are considered temperennials. They're really they're, on they're the cusp. They're sold as yeah. a temperennial. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just thinking that. I mean, like you said, they're really, really on the cusp of like, can they overwinter here? Mm -hmm. I remember last year um, here in our garden, we had a couple days of really big snow. Oh. I mean, it was just like a quick blast, and, and then. It was cold. And it was cold. It was so cold. It, it was, was like, like winter in a like couple days. The, it was like much. in the lower 20s or even high teens. We had to we actually wrap. I know. Well, we wrapped our cordon lines in um, in tarps. I we know. have we have some tarps. We wrapped them. We literally took Kinda the. We, we just covered them and wrapped it up yeah. and secured them with rocks, and that helped protect them um, uh, over the nighttime temps because basically we trapped any warm uh, any warmth that was radiating back out from uh, from our yard from the ground it got trapped under that tarp and it helped regulate and keep the uh, keep that air around those leaves around the cordial line tissue 
warmer than the outside temperatures. So yeah, so if you have something like that, you can you can try that out in your yard too. I know, because I mean, they're I believe they're a uh, hardy to zone nine, or they're yeah. kind of like it's it's like kind of a nine eight ish. Yeah, nine eight ish. Yeah. And we're zone we're eight B, like we've yep. mentioned, and so yeah, we have a few. But you know, it's amazing the microclimates that exist in those within those zones. I know yeah. we've talked in about this garden. before, but our garden we have them. a ton of zone nine, um, hardy to zone nine only plants, and they mm -hmm. overwinter and come back every year. So far, we have Gerbera daisies that are thriving. We've had for years. We in have pots. Calabricoa. Yeah. That we just. I'm really curious. We just uh, this year, this past summer, had transplanted some Calabricoa that has been overwintering for years. Mm -hmm. We put it out into the yard, and mm -hmm. it's it is covered and kind of surrounded by mulch, but. I'm really curious what's going to happen with that next year. Yeah, because it came from actually a peat pot. Uh, I think it was a hanging pot. It was pot. just a thing. It was and like falling apart. It was, and it was actually in a pot up against our greenhouse. We didn't really give it a lot of chance. We didn't. We kind didn't of have a lot of hope. It. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of hope that it was going to make I it. Know. I think we. Yeah, I think you're right. We, we just kind of forgot, forgot about it. it just it's got coming back. It got surrounded by all these other pots of things that we had out there, and we didn't like, heal it in, and it made it. It's fine. It's beautiful outside. It's, it's purple thriving, and white, so. kind of a mix. Like, yeah, like yeah. you said, it came in a mixed hanging basket. So, yeah. so fun when you have surprises like that, you know. And um, yeah. those of us that can um, overwinter cordyline in our yard, it's such. It's so re rewarding. I mean, we have it. Yep. Like you mentioned, we have some in pots. We have them in the ground. We never kind of know if they're going to come back, but they've been thriving. Some of them are getting like palm tree looking size. Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're huge. They're getting huge. Yeah. They're really um, tall. If you have them in pots or you have anything else in pots that's kind of on the border of, um, it's kind of about right on the line of, is it, you know, is it hardy? Is it not hardy? Go ahead and try to heal in those plants in the pots. And what I mean is, is try to put, you know, you have your pot. Here's your pot. Here's, here's a pot right here. Um, bring up either soil or mulch around it to protect the side of the pot so the side of the pot and the roots just inside of that pot aren't exposed to the cold temperatures or instead of bringing mulch or dirt up to it if you have a raised bed area uh, dig around uh, make a make a hole basically in that raised bed in the soil and put your uh, pot your plant in the pot down into that hole and just make sure that the rim of the pot is still above the soil level in there and that's considered healing in too and you can protect your plants and their their roots that are along the sides of those pots uh, from the cold temperatures and they're they're going to overwinter a lot better than if you didn't do that at all so just just throwing that out there so what's sorry going on i'm, I'm like furiously typing she's typing so fast. sherry real quick sherry osborne was jo joining us from the airport she's heading mm. to on a really fun trip hopefully uh, uh, to cancun and so duck. she was just saying goodbye have a great week everybody oh, yeah. so i was just like Bye. oh we want to catch her before Safe she turns travels. her phone off so um, yeah. we're so thankful you were able to just hang out for a little bit mm -hmm. and just kind of like, you know, connect with everybody. And yeah. thank you, Sherry. Awesome. Have thank an you, Sherry. awesome, awesome trip. Get lots of sun. Um, Enjoy that sun. We have a lot. Okay, so I want to, um, so we have some new members here that, um, names I haven't recognized yet. Oh, so we're really thankful cool. you guys are here. Right on. Bernadine says, Bernadine. Um, Bernadine's Bernadine. here. And Bernadine, re this is always really fun. Um, Bernadine received a mixed sun selection of bulbs and not sure what's in it yet. Ooh. So really, Ooh, she uh, mentioned really excited to really fun. see what comes up. You know, it's kind of going to be a surprise. Yeah, right. So that's All super right, cool. All right, Bernadine. So, and I think it was Sharon was mentioning, um, we were talking about how, you know, really, or maybe it was Stromy, sorry. I forgot who I was talking to. Um, was saying, you know, it's really frustrating. A lot of, a lot of bulb suppliers are running out and things yeah, are out of stock. And are. it, you know, it is later in October. <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, the they started advertising and getting people you know, getting their stock and supply in probably right at the end of summer. Yeah, August too. There, there was some stuff coming out in August. So we weren't ready yet no. for thinking about that. We were still in full summer mode, like most everybody. <laughs> so um, someday yeah. we'll get a little faster and get ahead of that. But okay. whatever. But I was, so, I was mentioning that um, as we get going into our today's topic, um, we did work really hard to try to find bulbs that are still available at most of the suppliers. Yes, and we have. So when we go over these, just to prep you guys, there's a link in the description uh, just below the first paragraph on the description of uh, this, uh, this video here. If you want, go down there, click on that link. It's actually the bulbs. It's a list of the bulbs that we're going to talk about, and it gives you some, some basic cultural information and you know where like, it'll grow, yeah, like, like zone, sun, and, yeah. sun needs, and how big it gets. And then f the furthest column over on the right-hand side of it is the actual bulb supplier a link to them online if you want to go check them out and, and then buy them and they should still be available yeah. as of yesterday when we finalized that they were still available 
So some of these, yeah, I, we can't, you guys, we cannot guarantee that they're still available, but no. you know, it's like if you're, if you fall in love with one of them, like we always do, put it on your list for next year, you know, and as soon as those yep. um, bulbs come on the market, you know, just grab as many as you can. Yeah. So. And sign up if you go there and you like what you oh, see from those point. guys. If you like what you see from that bulb supplier, sign up for their mailing list, sign up for their catalogs. And so you will get those and you will have a much better, um, a much better time actually getting oh, that's a great those, idea. Yeah. Uh, a better chance to get those bulbs. Great idea. So, yeah. And so. real quick, the, the document that Sean's talking about is pinned at the oh. top of the chat. So cool. you can just click right on that and go right to that. And Good job. Now, none of these are affiliate links or anything for us. We're just, nope. we created this just to help you guys. And we couldn't put all this information on the slides. It was just like too much. So <laughs> we wanted to have one spot where everybody could go and be like, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the bulb suppliers we used um, for this for today's um, topic for again our topic today is unusual or unique fall planted bulbs, so it's gonna be so fun. Mm -hmm. So we kind of bounced around um, Brent and Becky's bulbs. Yes. They always have an amazing, unusual supply of yep. different fall and spring bulbs. Their selection is very unique. Really unique. And it's just BrentandBecky'sBulbs.com. They're the best. We've met them in person. They are the just nicest, sweetest couple. Sweetest amazing people yep. they live uh, so. they're out of the east coast it's a family-owned business yeah, virginia yeah i think so yeah, out of virginia so yeah. we love them we yep. love you brent and becky um we also went to high country gardens where mm. we have um we just ordered some bulbs there for the first time this year so yep. and we've heard good things about their selection yep. so they have some great options too for yep. for bulbs yep and then there's hollandbulbfarms.com uh you're going to see some of those on that pdf that downloadable sheet so yeah, there's there's some a lot of great selections all over the place, and we just want to really show you guys and highlight these unusual bulbs. We think they're unusual. We think they're unusual. I know that's the caveat. Some of these you might have heard of before. Some of these are, you know, maybe you already have in your garden. If so, mm -hmm. we would love to hear from you about how you're enjoying, you know, that specific bulb. Yeah. If you are growing it already, and what zone you're in, and, oh yeah, you know, how how do you handle them? How how do you plant them? You know, all these different things because there can be some differences from zone to zone. So. I, know, I love this. I'm so yeah. excited to get in this topic. And I know Mark already mentioned in the chat oh. that he said this is probably the best topic we've ever had. He's so oh, excited. Oh, cool. Thanks, Mark. So I'm Mark. like, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh. <laughs> hope, hope you like it, Mark. I hope we live up to your <laughs> expectations. <laughs> but uh. Um, yeah, let's get into it. I'm so okay, excited. Okay, let's do this. So we are going to start talking about unique bulbs. Here we go. So let me do this real quick. There we go. Okay, we're shrinking. We're, we're shrinking. shrinking. Ah. Okay. So the rest of this, this for this slideshow, for those of you that are new joining us, again, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to be kind of up in the corner there, and we have a few slides to go through with you. To yep. We figure this is the best way to show you and present the information. Yep. yep. So unusual fall planted bulbs. And you need to of add. Of course, you need to add these. This year. Yes, <laughs> add these. Ah! Plant no. enablers. So before we get into this, we want, to, want you to think about, you know, what kind of fall bulbs do you usually plant or think about buying every year? And we've already heard from a lot Ooh. of you out in the poll. Let's check the poll. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, it's Let's usually see. daffodils and tulips. Yep. It's it's the go-tos, and, and that's great because they're really heavily marketed. They're beautiful. We know about them. The nurseries have them. Um, Home Depots and the big box stores, they have them. So it's something that was readily available that we go to. But what about some of the other types of bolts that you have? That are, you know, are you thinking about adding those? So just keep that in mind, you know, just kind of get that, get those thoughts going there. Um, and then also, um, yeah, just let us know uh, what kind of bulbs you usually plant down in the comments area in the chat, um, in, this, in the chat box there. And then if you're watching this in the replay, let us know down in the comments area. We want to know. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So, I'm so excited. Yeah. So here we go. So wait, before we oh. move on, hold on. Uh, so what kind of bulbs do you... So what do uh, Sean and I usually plant oh, every yeah. fall? We should talk about that. Um, sure. Tulips. <laughs> We, we, you there know, you we succumb to the Costco uh, marketing, you know, the, the big, uh, yep. Yep. You know, long field gardens, which we have grown a lot of long field yes. stuff before and they're great. They yep. really, they come up well, they're healthy. Their bulbs all feel really um, yep. healthy. And Daffodils. These are Dutch masters, uh, fortune, uh, very yellow. Which is, uh, we want and, it bright. A uh, little bit of, a little bit of orange there in the teacup area. So, and love, then, love, love those. and then we've got our tulips here. These are, uh, which ones are these? World's Fire Oxford's Elite 50 Tulips. I love this. Now, these are these are supposed to be Darwin hybrids, which um, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with tulips, um, those are the ones that are supposed to come back every year, like yes. like they're not supposed clockwork, to, right? They're not supposed to peter out. They're supposed to be, they're bred to actually come back and not just have one flush of growth. 
um, and that flower, that beautiful flower, and then peter up the next couple of years and, or completely go away. These are, these are the Darwin hybrids and they're supposed to come back That's every nice. single year and hopefully multiply if they're in the right conditions. That's right, I hope so. Because yeah. I mean, so for some of you that maybe are new to bulb planting, tulips don't usually, you, most people treat tulips like annuals, yes. meaning you plant them one year in the fall, of course, and you, you enjoy them in the spring and then you either take them out you know, a lot of people lift them at the end of uh, spring. Or just completely forget about them and they just kind of go away. <laughs> you, might, you might get one or two the next year, but then the year after that, they, they might just go away. And even if they just don't go away, the critters are going to get them. If you've got... Um, Rodents love tulip bulbs. Yeah, if you've got, um, what is it, moles, if you've got... Squirrels. Gophers, yeah, squirrels. Um, even raccoons, they'll dig. They can smell it. They can find those things. And so, not to mention, deer love eating the flowers. Oh, or, you yeah. know, so I mean, they're kind of one of those bulbs that you have to protect um, if you live in those kind of areas, yep. or just take your chances. A lot of people plant um, tulips kind of in the center and maybe do a ring of daffodils around it, which mm -hmm. not only looks beautiful, but it's good planning because daffodils are poisonous. So they don't taste very good to the critters. Yeah. So that's so, kind of a fun. Yeah. Anyway. So it's an easy way to take care of that, but it's not foolproof though. It's not so foolproof, but it's, it's that a good try. But yep. we have a lot of crocus in our yard. Um, we have a lot of what? We have Grape muscari hyacinth. everywhere. Yes. We love muscari. We've got Spanish bluebell. We have Spanish bluebells, which are so beautiful. My grandma or grandpa, one Plants of them, them planted yeah. those years ago. They just, they're prolific. They really oh, take over. Man. Spanish bluebells, actually, we found on the list of a lot of unique bulbs. And we were kind of like, those don't sound unique to us, so no, we didn't include don't. that. But we have them, so that's why they're that's not so probably, unique. They're but, also known is what wood hyacinth i think no I'm maybe not I'm, sure. I'm maybe i'm, I'm not sure about that yeah but that's okay there's so many there's so many bulbs know, oh my gosh so let's get into this okay. so the first ones are the early spring bloomers i think we have a quick slide about oh, sorry. our goal for today's our topic for which this, we've yeah. probably already talked about we're so many excited to get to the plant times yeah so um, our goal for today is just to share with you and inspire you about some ideas you know some unusual fall bulbs that you may have never heard of before some of these you may have heard of, but maybe didn't know what they looked like, or you didn't realize they were a fall planted bulb. Yeah, and you know what? Um, if you're, if you feel like it, um, if you're, if you're gonna post anything about uh, your bulbs on any social media uh, platforms or whatever, make sure to use the hashtag Plant Enablers because that's all of us, right? I mean, we enable each other to plant and to enjoy flowers. So you know. Try and use and that to be fun. I love that. And also to help to ensure that we'll see it because plant enablers, yeah, unfortunately we didn't make that one up, right? That's been out for a while. That's but okay. We uh, also add on <laughs> hashtag spoken garden so we can see yeah, it Yeah, totally. Yeah, so really love cool, that. you guys. Okay, so, now so, to the plant. Now, yes, here we go. Okay. So I think Sean, oh, I think Sean already uh, mentioned that we organize these into early blooming, mid blooming, and late bloom, spring blooming, um, just to kind of like categorize them. Somehow. Oh, I'm missing a, I'm missing a slide here. Sorry, uh -oh. folks. Sorry. Um, go if you want to go ahead and do this, I can try and get that. So we'll start with the mid. We're kind of gonna go out of order here. We'll do mid spring because these kind of. Some of these might bloom earlier or later in the spring anyway, so they just kind of lump them all into mid-spring blooming. So um, again, some of these you might have heard of before, like the Crown Imperial. Uh, I We would love to grow that in our yard. It's so, so beautiful. It's actually a, in the Fritillaria family. Um, they have it in, it, we chose the yellow to show you. There's a red Crown Imperial, and they basically grow up this tall stem and just this huge like top piece that just look so cool, mm -hmm. I think, in your garden. Maybe some of you grow that, so that's not very unusual for you, but um, that was one that maybe you've never heard of. So again, it's called a Crown Imperial. So we have that linked. Um, as you can see, it is um, it's it can grow in zones three through eight. So that's a pretty big range. Yep. So we also have, now this is gorgeous in the middle here, this bright pink. Um, it's called a cord, cord, Corydalus. Cord, Corydalus. Corydalus. <laughs> I can't even say it. Or Corydalus. Um, Cordalis. Cordalis. Yeah. But, um, so that we found this one on Brent and Becky's. Um, it's called a George P. Baker is the mm. name. And it's, um, it almost reminds me of a salvia or even like a, um, yeah, it's, it's something definitely, in the mint family. It's, it's got a definite, too. yeah, it's got a definite trumpeted it's flower. A trumpet. They're just that. beautiful in that bright pink. Oh I'm my gosh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's writing it down. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's a beautiful plant. It's, it's amazing. Um, let's see, uh, we have, I've got the PDF up here on my screen so we can talk a little bit more about it. 
Uh, it grows up to six inches tall. It loves part shade. Isn't that cool? So it's a part shade, beautiful spring flowering bulb. And um, what, a, what a beautiful plant to have out in your garden. And then the next one uh, we have up here is the snake's head fritillaria. Oh, that, what I a love name. Those. those. You know, and a lot of wow. us, you've probably heard of fritillarias and seen those. Um, they, they're just so cool the way yeah. they grow. They kind of look like amazing. a snowdrop, but they have a distinct yeah. pattern and color. Yeah, that, that, uh, that pattern, that, that snake's head, it does actually remind, remind me a little bit of scales on a snake. It kind of does. Kind of, you you know, know. Whether you like snakes or not, it's still a beautiful flower. And uh, yeah, just the frittle areas, they, they, the flower comes up, it develops, and then it just kind of hangs. It's so cool. It just kind of hangs over and does this. And it's so unique. I mean, even for us, we find it very unique. I mean, we, we can grow them here, but we don't have them in our yard, so therefore it's unique to us. <laughs> so um, We have a couple other, um, one additional oh, bulb. Yeah. Now, it was hard. We got a lot more early blooming or late blooming, but mid was a little bit of a challenge, but I think some of you might really like this. This is actually a foliage, foliage plant. Mm. If you look at additional bulbs at the bottom there, and maybe I shouldn't say it's a full foliage plant though, because it does bloom with a spike of like red berries well, in the it, summer. Yeah, it has berries. It's, it's, the, it's the darndest thing. I know, and we didn't show a picture like of this it. this huge, like, it's like a mass of this huge berries, so these bright red really berries. Really beautiful. Is, well, maybe it's not like that, but maybe it's just like that tall, and it's just like this cylinder of tightly packed berries. It's, it's amazing. It's so it's cool. So cool. This is, um, a lot of people call it the Italian arum. So it's a, mm. again, it's a foliage plant. And we have more information on the sheet that we have pinned at the top of the chat. Yes. So if you click, um, that was a Brent and Becky's um, find, I believe. And they they talk a lot about it on their, their website. So you'll definitely want to check it out. It's a three season interest plant. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't love that? Yep. Plus it's a part shade. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of, it grows in zones five through nine. Yeah. Beautiful, you guys. Amazing. So and that such would a be, unique that's plant. a cool option. Yeah. And sorry, guys, I, I can't get the, uh, right now I have all my, uh, I have like Dropbox turned off so my computer doesn't completely freak out and freeze the frames and all this and mess up the live. So I can't turn that back on and grab the, the live, uh, the one, uh, the first slide for the early bloomers, but we can tell you about them. And so uh, the early bloomers, and when we say early spring bloomers, we're talking like, the beginning of the beginning of spring, maybe even the end of winter too, depending on how that year is going and how early your spring actually starts. So, um, first off, is double snowdrops. This is a galanthus. Oh my nevalis. gosh, I want that. Well, okay, so we're on the early spring. Yeah, and guys, if you want to follow along with what I'm talking about, what we're talking about here, open up that Bitly link for this PDF, and you can follow along because um, that's what I'm looking at right here. It grows this, so this double snowdrops flore plino, plino, flore plino is the cultivar. Um, it grows in zones three through eight. It's full sun to full shade. It has such a, a you know, that's those sun needs, the shade, shade needs, huge range. I mean, it's the whole range of either sun or shade. So that's so cool. Oh, we, I, I just realized what you said. We can't pull this slide up right now. What do you mean? The early spring? No, because I'm not oh, I'm not bummer. connected to the Dropbox. Oh, you guys have to look I've at the... I've got to turn it off. You I'm have sorry, to look guys. at the double snowdrop that he's yeah. talking about right now. It Imagine yeah. a snowdrop, which I think a couple of you mentioned you planted, but it has this just... Yeah, it's a double, so it's just really... It's petite, but it, it's really like full, like headed. It's, it's pretty, yeah. it's beautiful. Um, yeah, click on that link for uh, Holland Bulb Farms. Go there and check it out, because you'll just be like, wow! It's so beautiful. I wonder if... So next up is the Glory of Snow Pink Giant Cultivar of Chunodoxa. I think I'm saying that right. I've never, I've never had to pronounce this one before, so bear with me. Um, it's a Chunodoxa. It grows in zones two through eight. Uh, full sun to part sun or part shade. Um, it grows to six to eight inches tall. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of getting up there, but it's not like super tall. Can you show beautiful. your screen for a minute? Sure. I'm going to actually show you guys, since we're having a little tech difficulty Sorry, with this guys. slide, oh, I want to yeah, show go. you my there you pictures go. there. That's not the best. Isn't that beautiful? But at though? least we can, here, let me try to level it out. There we go. Oh, there you go. So here's our early spring bloomer slide. Um, that, yeah. Again, we sorry about that, you guys. We weren't able to pull that up. So So you see the snowflakes? Or the, see the, yeah, the, oh, yeah. Double, the yeah. double snowflake right in the middle there. Oh, mm -hmm. oh those were regular snowflakes. Sorry. The oh, doubles. the double snowdrops is We didn't have okay, a picture of it. Additional. Okay. But yeah, there's that Chinodoxa. Um, glory of the snow. Oh, it's so beautiful. The, what does it say? Snow? Glory of the snow. That's a beautiful plant. Yep. And then that Siberian squill. Oh, man. We, it's Scylla. Or Scylla? Yeah, Scylla. Scylla. It's known as Scylla. Yeah, Scylla yeah. Siberica. And it's, 
It's a Siberian squill, beautiful plant, and we actually want to get that for our we, yard. I think we got it oh, in our recent order. Oh, yeah. see, we, we have to we have to open that box to see what we got. I'm pretty so, sure we ordered that. Yeah. So sorry so, we didn't get to show that full sorry, screen, guys. you guys, but at that least you get fault. to see a few. Well, it happens sorry. everywhere. But um, but go to the go to that sheet that we've um, linked and definitely click on those mm -hmm. for the early spring because definitely. Who doesn't want early, early spring blooming plants, I know, right? I mean, I they just, they're the first to pop oh, up in your man. yard and, oh, and these are These are gorgeous. So there's the, that was the, the early spring ones. Thank you for doing that, by the way, Harry. And then, um, so here's our mid spring bloomers. And just look at all that color. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I just Can love you imagine it. that in, in mid spring, along with your daffodils, you know, some of your, your later daffodils and some of your tulips and your grape hyacinth and, some of these other uh, these other uh, bulbs coming up in the spring. Can you imagine these out there with them? I can. It'd be gorgeous. It'd be, I know. It'd be I so, love. I really so want the crown of Um, You know, I wanted to pause on that for a minute. Um, I think uh, the viewer had to go to work already, but um, oh, okay. uh, the account was uh, quick 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 knee. I think is how you pronounce it. Quick knee. Quick knee. Um, mentioned that um, they're over in the, it sounds like the east side maybe of, of our state, Washington, oh, cool. and, but mentioned that the crown imperials are, they would lo love to plant those, but they have really high winds. Oh, and they're yeah. so tall and, yeah. you know, these get up to, I believe, uh, close to 16 to 18 inches, I think. Uh, Crown Imperial. It's on the, the mid. It's in the mids. So let's okay. go here. Uh, we had the Fritillaria. height there. Oh, 36 to 40 yeah. inches tall. Oh, yeah. So those get really tall. Yeah, you, did, you, have, yeah, to really you get any wind. Them. You yep. have to use some type of trellis maybe, but that, that might not be, you might not be able to do that. And so, yeah. That's too bad, but hey, there's there's a you yeah. know what there's shorter versions of the Crown Imperials too, I really or not add Crown those. Imperial, but I um, feel like you the could. Oh right. Yeah. And like the Snakehead, sorry, the Snakehead Fritillaria, it only gets up to about 15 inches tall. Yeah, that's that's so a good height. It's a little bit shorter, yeah. might not be impacted so much by the wind, depending on where you plant it. I know so, those Crown Imperials. Yeah. Wow, they get they do get tall. Yeah, really beautiful plants. So cool, you guys. So, okay, so moving okay, on to... Okay, so we did mid, then we did kind of backtracked it early. Now let's go to late blooming. The late bloomers, the late spring bloomers. And oh, some of there's these, so many I want on and, this and, list. Yeah, and, and <laughs> on this list, you guys, some of these actually bloom into early summer. Too. Yeah, they do. So, which is super cool. But they're still fall planted bulbs. I know, so, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So up here we got uh, on the very left there, wild hyacinth camassia. That's Tomasia, so beautiful gorgeous. plant. Yeah, zones three through three eight. Three through eight. You know, a lot of these that we've found and that we're presenting to you, their zone, their hardiness zone range is quite large. There's, they have quite a range to grow in, which is amazing. You know, I mean, as far as you think of plants, some plants only grow in like one or two zones, maybe three zones max. These have a range of zones. I mean, even that robustus pink foxtail lily, Ooh. four to eight zones, four to eight. That's a good range. That's a good range. You know. So and, and the foxtail lilies come in a lot of other colors. I fell in love oh, with the yeah. yellow one, um, oh, and yeah. and I believe this was from Holland Bold Farm, but they have them in other other places as well. They have a bright yellow bright one. You guys. Yellow. I mean, bright yellow, oh. bright yellow. It's beautiful. Love it's, it. it looks just like this white one, except it's just yellow, and it blooms. The blooms start uh, opening up from the bottom of that whole inflorescence of that whole large spike of flowers. It starts on the bottom, and then it progresses up to the tip top. So. It'll, it'll take it a little while to go from the bottom to the top and you'll have that flower for, I mean, it, it could be probably two weeks, maybe a little bit more depending on your climate and how, how well they're doing out in your garden. Oh, I love those. Oh man, beautiful. So beautiful, but oh. unfortunately, a lot of those, a lot of those um, box hill lilies have been sold out at a lot of yeah, places. But this but one, as of last night, was still available at Holland Bold Farm. Yep, so go check it out, you guys. Yep. Get, get our, um, either go there right now, just based off of this, Holland Bold Farms, or hollandbulbfarm.com uh, or uh, download, uh, open up that PDF and click on that link on the far right. So, and last up on this slide, Sparaxis. That is Harlequin so Harlequin flower, I beautiful. love those. It's these beautiful multicolored, like star-shaped flowers. There's, and look at all those, just that mix of color. And mm -hmm. this is from American Meadows, they sell mm -hmm. them in a mix. So mm -hmm. you're gonna get like a variety of color. So that's pretty fun, you know, and to kind of. Look at that range. Two to ten. Jeez, I know. Zones that's two huge. through ten. Yeah, in two zone two hardiness zone, it gets pretty darn cold. In yeah, zone that's two. really exciting. That so wow, it can be grown in and up to a hotter zone like ten. Yeah, these are these kind of remind me of anemones a little bit, mm -hmm. where you can plant them kind of any time, and you, I mean you could actually wait and plant these in the spring for a summer bloom too. Yeah, maybe. So yeah, yeah. 
I believe it said that on the website. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't remember that. So, so um, but, I love yeah. all the color. There's oh. the variety there. Those are oh, really... So amazing, you guys. So beautiful. Yeah. And then there's some additional bulbs listed there. The Tritelia. 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 It's hard to pronounce. Now, uh, Brent and Becky's. <laughs> so, yeah. So, there's two on there. There's, the, there's two cultivars. There's the Silver Queen, and then there's Rudy. And both are gorgeous. So, make sure to go check those out at uh, BrentandBeckysBulbs.com. And then Silver Bells. Orna... Ornithogalum. Ornithogalum newtons, newtons, I think. Sorry, newtons. some of yeah. these botanical names. They're fun, aren't they? Yeah, botanical Probably names. Probably not saying them correctly because we're not <laughs> experts on botanical names. Well, but to each their own. Tomato, tomato. Right. Everybody says it's different. But yep. those are a really beautiful option as well for Telling a late bloomer. So um, these yeah. are just some ideas. And I mean, I could see, I'm already looking at the pictures. And sorry, we couldn't fit all the pictures on the slide. Mm. But you know, you can kind of mix and match. I've always loved the look of a tall, spiky flower oh, mixed yeah. in with, you know, like a grouping of other other shapes and textures. So I think that's, that foxtail lily is really cool. I think oh, that yeah. would look beautiful in a garden. Can you imagine the foxtail lily um, planted in and around possibly large alliums? Oh, that would be really cool. Because That'd be the, interesting. Because we have, we have large alliums in our... Love um, alliums. Um, that's... In our garden. And they bloom a little bit later into, you know... Yeah, kind of, they're, they're, they're kind spring. of a late spring bloomer yep. for us. And so, um, can you imagine those in there with that? I mean, that would be beautiful. That either that white and the yellow foxtail, um, with a uh, with a white uh, globe allium or the purple. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that would be gorgeous. We were so so oh. bummed recently. We tried to get um, there were there are, alliums are so popular that that's one that is unfortunately sold out in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Like they're just out of mm -hmm. order. Um, we tried to, we found some, I believe it was High Country Gardens had some beautiful blue alliums, you guys. Mm -hmm. I think they might still be available. Um, they're not on our list because it's not a very unusual bulb. A lot of people plant alliums. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't send them to our state and that was complete news to Jeez. us. They sent us a really apologetic, sorry, um, according to the USDA, they told us uh, we're not able to send alliums to Washington State and we were like, what? Yeah. That so, was news to us because we order aliens a lot. Yeah. So we were super bummed. We tried to plead our case, but it is what it is. It it's is okay. what it is. But, okay. but those are available, you guys, and they were really, really pretty. Yeah. Yep. Go check them out. Um, yeah. There's so many bulbs here. There's so much to choose from. And so we hope this helped you and inspired you to try out some new bulbs and add them to your garden. Yeah. So, I know there's there's a lot. I really like yeah. the cord Cordalis. Oh, man. The George P. Baker. Oh. That was a, I believe that was an early, no, I forgot. Which slide sure. that was, but I'm not sure. Anyway, um, lots and lots of options, you guys. So Yay. with that, what do you guys like from that list? What yeah. were some of your favorites? I know the early, maybe you saw that a little bit. Um, hopefully, you were able to see some of those. But if you click on the links of the PDF that we have pinned right at the top of the um, chat, there mm -hmm. you can find every single bulb we talked about in you know, right on your screen. Yeah, and you know, when you go to those websites, you'll be able to find, they have a listing on the websites, usually in their bulb listings, um, from like pull down menus. There's a specialty bulbs, unusual yeah. bulbs, hard to find or, or uh, yeah, it's just different kinds of bulbs. There's a title for that at each one of these uh, websites. If, you, if you're not interested or you wanna look at more unusual bulbs that you're not familiar with, click on that specialty link. Find, find that link from those drop down menus and go there and check out, because there's a lot more. Um, these were just the ones that we felt were unusual mm -hmm. to us and um, that fit into our categories that we could we wanted to present to you of early, mid, and late uh, spring flowering bulbs. So there's a lot more Yay. to choose from. There's so, so many. Yeah, so yeah, let us know uh, what you liked uh, in, the, in the comments there in the chat area. We'd love to hear about it. I know, there's a few things we've got to oh, read out loud oh, on the cool. chat. So let me Ooh. back up here. Um, hi to Victoria Lynch. Thank hey, you for joining morning, Victoria. us, Victoria. Victoria is planting daffodils, muscari, allium, and crocus this year. Nice. First time planting bulbs. Oh, congratulations. You're going to have so Victoria much said oh, she wow. got a little excited. Yeah, right? It's easy <laughs> yeah, to <why> do. <laughs> so that's super fun. Can't oh, wait. And Victoria, um, something that helped us out last year that we were just like, why haven't we bought one of these yet until now? It's a bulb auger. Oh, yeah. Yes. Go to either Couple Amazon or another another place out there that you can buy them. Uh, it's basically a big drill bit and it's an auger. You put it on the end of a power drill and you can just you can just make all your bulb holes in big areas. Uh, it helps save your back and a lot of time digging. I think we have that so. linked on our Amazon shop. We have a new Amazon oh, store yeah, that about we that. were um, we're starting to gather and collect our list of favorites. A lot of you uh, email us and ask us on different um, social media, like mm -hmm. 
what's your favorite this or what's your favorite that? What do you use for this? So mm-hmm. we're we're gathering all that together just so you can like we can tell everybody to go to one place. Yeah, I think it's Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash spoken garden. And we already have some things listed on there. I think I the, think the, the ball bulb, if there? it's not, we're going to add it today because I know that that. And again, a lot of you might have already um, planted some of your bulbs already. but Which is fine. Yeah. yeah. But I want to just mention that to you, Victoria, and any, any of you other guys out there that are still uh, needing to plant your bulbs. Go and find a bulb auger. It'll really help uh, make planting a lot easier, especially if you have like... 50 or more bulbs to plant. I mean, even 20 or more. I mean, I digging individual holes or just large areas, it can get really exhausting and you don't want to overdo it. And a lot of so. you probably watch Garden Answer. She uses those a lot on videos. Oh, and she's you got can some use them. big she ones has too. A ton she of has different huge sizes. We, augers. We find that we just need the one. That's fine for us. We use it for planting perennial plants as well. Yeah. I mean, it's very useful. So it's fun to... It goes fast. It just makes planting easier. It's easier on your back. You don't have to do as, you know, as much digging. So... Yeah. That yeah. it's a great tool. Yeah. So um, let's definitely. see what else is going on. So, um, uh, oh, Liza has a great question. If Ooh, we cool. purchase these bulbs, like any of the bulbs, uh-huh. um, how do we? How do you recommend we store them um, for planting next year? Because Liza has already done planting, but she might want to add some things. I mean, I would just say put them in the ground now. But if, if you can, if you can, yeah, you know, Liza, how um, do you store that, them? That's a great question. If the ground's still workable in where you live, Spokane. I think, mm-hmm. yeah, Spokane. Um, go ahead and put them in the ground. It's not going to hurt them, especially if they're um, uh, like tulips and daffodils. They'll be fine as long as you get the right planting depth and follow the uh, the instructions on planting on the uh, on the packaging the bulbs come in. Um, there's some general ways to do that. I won't grab them out of here, but basically um, go down as deep, maybe two or three times the width of that bulb. That's how deep you go. That's a general. Uh, planting depth that you can use or follow the instructions on the bag specifically and then you can get that down. Yeah, if the soil is still workable, if it's not completely frozen yet and you can get out there and, and dig down and make your holes and stuff, get them out. Get them in the ground. Um, so, um, But yeah, if you want to store them, they need to be kept in a cool, dry, um, dark environment. Um, so try, try, to, yeah. try to do that if you can. Um, and chances are, um, this happens sometimes to people, is they'll they'll store them now and they want to use them next year. Well, next year ends up being like early spring. You go out, if you got them in your garage in a cool, dry, dark spot, and you go out and you, um, you see them, you check them out, they might start growing. And at that point, it's like, well, got to plant them. But it's okay to plant those bulbs, the spring flowering bulbs, in the spring. Um, it's okay to do that. That's that's one thing that some people do when, well, that's what people do if the bulbs aren't hardy in their area and they have to dig them out and store them over the winter. And then what they do is once they start sprouting and um, the threat of, of the cold, cold temperatures that the bulbs uh, aren't hardy to pass, uh, those people will actually take those bulbs out and plant them in the early spring and then they grow and they're fine. So, yeah. so be aware of that if you're going to store them, they might start to sprout. I know we have a few so. bulbs that we haven't planted from last year, and I think we'll probably anemones, um, beautiful windflowers. Um, mm-hmm. We've got a bunch of those still. We they came in a giant mm-hmm. quantity, and I guess we just never planted them all. No, so we, we still have a little bag of them, and um, we've been keeping them stored in a cool, dry place. So yep. kind of think we should just throw those out this fall sometime. Yep, get them out there. Just get them out. Yep, get I them know. out there. Then it's done. We don't. Have to I worry know. About. And Liza mentioned um, oh. she wants to try. Um, where did I just see that? Sorry, let me look. Um, she wants to try the Harlequin. Um, mix that we showed and Ooh, cool. the double snowdrops. So yeah. actually, I'm adding double snowdrops to our list too. <laughs> and then um, let's see. So a couple other things. Um, actually, this is hilarious. Quickney said um, regarding the alliums that they wouldn't send to us. Unfortunately, she's like, just have an Idaho friend get them. <laughs> right. But I actually That's think they idea. might be banned in Idaho too. So yeah. it's kind of like, what alliums? Apparently they're invasive and on blah blah blah. So we've never had a problem. Never had a problem. We've had right. alliums sent to us before, so whatever. Yeah, buy another company. I was, you know, I wouldn't care, but I really, really, really wanted the blue ones. Um, yeah. They don't have them in stores around us, so whatever. I'll, I will get over it and just move on. Um, let's see. Um, Quigney said she wanted to try, or they wanted to try snowdrops as well. So cool. That's cool. Right totally on. love those. Um, Jay Harrison is here and said she's hey, uh, really happy to be here. Missed us. Miss, yeah, we missed you. We missed you. Um, yeah, really thankful that you're here. Um, 
Sharon mentioned that um, Sharon's tried the cool, the snake head fritillarias that oh, we showed, really, which are wow. so beautiful. Yeah. Said they didn't do that well last year, so hoping oh. that they bloom and do better this year. Yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, we so hope we were so mentioning too. that too. Um, Megan Tran is here. Hi, hey. Megan. Morning, Megan. Um, hope you're doing well and thank you for joining us, Megan. Megan asked, have we ever tried perennial tulips in our garden before? So the answer is yes, yes. and no. Um, well, yes, well, as of last year. Last last fall, we planted some Darwin tulips. Dar yeah, the Darwin the, the hybrids. The Darwin hybrids, and, um, and they came blends. up this yeah they, they came up this this spring. They did great. They're beautiful. Um, we had we had great germination and, and growth and stuff from them. Um, we don't know yet how they're gonna do now with a full year because we just got that first flush of growth. The big test is this next spring and seeing how they do and how they come up. I know. So I mean, I have high yeah. hopes for them. We have a lot of tulips around our yard. Some of them actually weren't Dar Darwin hy hybrids, but they did come back, but they just looked different. They weren't as yeah. big. They were like, you can tell it was like a new bulb, you know, that had splintered off from the, the mother bulb. Yeah. They weren't very, you know, large. Yeah, they, they, they just... Typical petering out of, of just a, a typical tulip. Um, not a Darwin hybrid or a perennial. So yeah, but yeah, um, they're fun though. They're really great, Megan, and we, we hope uh, we hope you try it too. I know. Um, because yeah, they're just beautiful. So um, let's see what else is going on here. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so that. Oh, uh, Wendy, Wendy Stragos. Hey. Or Stratag oh, sorry, I probably just said your name wrong. I'm, my bad. Stratagos, um, Stratagos asked about Lily of the Valley. Have we ever, and which is, I, I believe, a fall planted bulb as well, Lily of the Valley. It wasn't on our list, so we, and we don't grow it, so we can't really talk to that, speak to that. I don't think we had it on our list, or did we? But I believe that's a fall planted. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't, sorry, <laughs> she's saying we got it, her name. Um, yeah, so yeah. what do you know about it? Have you ever planted yeah. it before, or are you just wondering about it? We, we definitely have not, so. Yeah. Sorry, we can't speak to that specific bulb, but I would say just do some research, see what zone it grows in, look for its growing conditions, and yep. see if anybody still has it available. Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, check out check out Eden Brothers. Oh, and if you go to Eden Brothers, use our coupon code uh, Spoken, all in caps, oh, and yeah. that'll be fifteen percent off uh, your total order at EdenBrothers.com. So Spoken as a coupon code when you check out. 15% off. Just want to mention that because we haven't mentioned it. I know. That yet. Well, we didn't. So, yeah, we didn't use Eden Brothers as a. So a go to EdenBrothers.com, E D E N Brothers.com. Look for the Lily of the Valley. And then definitely, um, was it Brett and Becky's? We, yes. Go definitely. to Brett and Becky's. Um, go to uh, what? Holland Bulb Farm. High Country Garden. High Country Garden. I mean, there's a ton. There's Brex. American Brex Meadows. Brex sells bulbs. Um, yeah. yeah. American Meadows. Try all of those there's out. There's tons. Because chances are you will find Lily the Valley and you'll be able to find exactly what you need. I know. I don't, yeah. That's yep. one I haven't heard of. Um, Wendy mentioned that she loved it. She's never grown it before, but um, oh, okay. yeah, definitely going to. Okay. Gonna check that out. Uh, Megan Tran has a question. What do you do with bulbs after they bloom in containers? Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's a great. Kind of depends on the bulb, and it depends on your plans for the following year. You almost have to like think ahead, right? Yep. You need to just uh, think about: Are you going to use that planter? Do you want to use that planter uh, for other uh, plants further on into the the summer months um, or in the fall? Um, if if so, think about. Think about the plants uh, going in there. Are they going to need a lot of water? Not, a, not too much water? Um, because you don't, a lot of bulbs, you don't want them to sit in water all the time because they will rot. Um, a lot of bulbs, can't, that can happen too. So if you plan on using that planter for other plants that you're going to have to water all the time, let those bulbs, let the, let the bulbs you have in there die down to the ground, let them wither to the ground so they complete their full growth cycle. And when I say wither to the ground, I mean their leaves and stem will turn brown and just literally just look like it's dead. So, and that's on top of the ground. The bulb down below should be fine. Once all that growth on top uh, of the soil uh, withers and dies, uh, go ahead and dig around the bulb and dig it out. Uh, you can cut away that withered part of the stem and leaves. And then you can take your bulb um, you can either plant it in another area mm -hmm. if you want. We've done that before. Um, yeah, and so and that's perfectly fine. The bulb will be fine, um, and because it's going dormant, it doesn't need a lot of moisture or anything to keep to stay alive and such. Mm -hmm. Or if you want, uh, dig it out of the ground, uh, let it dry off, get all the dirt off of it, and if you want to store it, then make sure it's completely dry. Put it in a cool, dry place, uh, dark place, 
and let it sit and then bring it back out um, in the in the fall uh, to replant it um, if that's if that's your plan yeah um, that's I know so, yeah. yeah you can a lot of people do that or mm -hmm. Sean and I kind of sometimes we I mean to be completely honest we forget sometimes that we have certain bulbs in certain containers all the time you know, this is just the way we garden. So it's kind of a mix of, um, oh, we meant to do that, or oh, whoops, we didn't mean it. You know, we didn't mean to do that. So like this, a few weeks ago, we yeah. actually dug through a bunch of our containers and took out a lot of bulbs that have already like, these were fall planted bulbs from last, actually the last couple years, and a lot of them we we noticed had really you know multiplied and they were so thick in the container we had to take them out and, and separate them. There was literally nowhere for. So the bulbs were underneath the ground. They had multiplied underneath. It was so dense, the plants <laughs> on top, the roots could not grow enough to sustain the top portion of the plant to let it really fill out and fill in the pot. So that's why we had such sparse. Our looking containers were pots. not pretty this year. Not at all. <laughs> they were but but you know through a couple the, of them. Yeah, we we started thinking it's like midway through the summer. What the What's heck is going, going on? on? They just nothing would grow, and then we're like, oh my god. It's like it's like we know we know we're watering was, enough. Yeah. They're in good soil. They're getting enough sun. Uh, we fertilized, you know, sporadically when we remembered to do it, and we're like, "What? What is going on?" So then we thought about it about late. I think it was late summer. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, there's bulbs there's underneath so there. So many bulbs. And then we just kind of dug down a little bit to look. <laughs> it was so thick. The the roots, of the plants on top, had nowhere to uh, to grow into. So we're like, "Oh!" So we made a video. I know. About we were like <laughs> digging those out and separating them, and so. But we yeah. found a lot of new bulbs. We got to. Oh my gosh! Yard, so. so many great pythons. So, I know. And daffs. Daffs. Oh, man. So Megan, back to your question. Um, mm. You can lift after they've died and withered to the ground. You can lift them out of the container, right, and store yep. them. Yep. Or you can leave them there and hope that they grow the next year. But just like you said, make sure that whatever you plant on top has the same water needs. Or or less water needs. Or less. So yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. Also, if you're going to plant on top of them. Uh, a good way to do it is, is don't put like a woody perennial or evergreen perennial in that pot because it's just going to grow and grow out and the amount of space for the bulbs to come back up later and then have to grow through the canopy um, of all of, of, of the plant on top, it makes it really hard for mm. those bulbs to come up. So keep that in mind. Try not to plant uh, any type of perennial plant on top of the bulbs. And even if it's a herbaceous perennial and it grows from a, you know, like a, a spreading crown or anything, um, over time that crown's going to keep growing and it'll create an impenetrable mat for the bulbs to try and penetrate through. So like Shasta what? daisies right. or uh, you know, a couple like panulas. And so try not to plant uh, those types of plants on top of the bulbs either because after a while, after about a year or two, the bulbs aren't going to be able to penetrate through that growth which plate is, of that, that crown of that perennial. Which so. is what we had happen when we realized, oh my gosh, we had all these daffodils in there that we hadn't seen the previous season. So we were like, oh, okay. Oops. So that's, and Wendy just mentioned <laughs> she that that's the problem she had this year too. Oh, okay. So it happens. Yeah. You know, we're not yep. perfect. Um, it's just fun to experiment. And then sometimes, unfortunately, you get busy and forget things. Mm. And sometimes you have happy accidents and sometimes you have containers that look like like not so good garbage because they, not so good. there's no room for the plant so you know it's just a I don't uh, know. it's uh, a balancing you know, act it is and this is some this is a good reason <laughs> why a lot of gardeners take notes every year of what they yeah, plant really where they plant do that. it and yeah that's why those notes sometimes come in handy too because you can't remember everything we're you know, all of us are just go 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 all the time so taking those notes and be able to refer know, back to those can really idea. help in situations like this. And I mean, there's so many amazing so. garden journals out there. It's some, oh, yeah. some of you are really organized and have some amazing systems, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, Sean and I find that we're so organized in our office and with our business, but then outside it's kind of like our time to <laughs> experiment. And we, there's a lot of things, I mean, that we do pretty regularly, but then some things we're like, well, we'll get to that later. Sometimes you know, it's organized okay. and sometimes it's organized chaos. It's organized chaos and sometimes <laughs> that's okay, right? Yeah. We it's love fun. we love our garden. We just wish it was a little bit bigger. Keeps but things interesting. Don't we all? Don't yeah. we all want a bigger garden? Yep. More space, right? Always. Yeah. But, um, oh, we're, so, we're all over the place. But oh, yeah. we love all of those comments and questions, yeah. you guys. I hope Thanks, that was helpful and um, it's really fun to think about just it is. It's like you're reflecting on the past and learning from that and moving forward. And that's what makes a gardener so yep. so much more confident and just trying new things and trying new bulbs, you know, and maybe experimenting a little bit with what grows well. Like um, Queekney mentioned, you know, crown, um, crown Imperials can't really grow them in 
in her area because they fall over and they snap. Yep. But other people might have really good luck with them. So yep. Yep. it's fun to try things and to yep. see where, where they, how well they do in your I know. garden. And each garden is so unique. I know. Um, so keep, take that in consideration. Don't be too hard on yourself when you're gardening and something might work or might, something might not work so well or might not work at all. Uh, be good to yourself and just learn from learn from those uh, those situations. I know I love so, that. It's all good. I was, so I was just um, yeah. looking back and uh, I think it was Victoria was saying that she has never planted bulbs before and bought a whole bunch of fun bulbs. And, awesome. You know that's so cool to hear Ooh. that kind of story and yeah, experimenting and um, those of you that are new to bulb planting and you're a little like apprehensive, a little unsure of how to do it, we have a class that we're offering on amphi.com. It's oh, a yeah, live. I it's a teaching oh platform God. that is, um, it's a live class. So basically you would sit down with us at a, like on a Zoom. It's all organized through this platform. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. It's like Udemy or any, did I say that right? Udemy, Udemy, Udemy. Tomato, tomato. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But you know, the, those teaching platforms, <laughs> Skillshare and all those, but this is a live platform. Mm -hmm. So Sean and I have been able to sit down with a lot of, um, of students so far and we mm -hmm. love it. We're able to like talk one-on-one -on -one with people yep about certain situations in their garden and help them through it. So yep. it's, it's fun to interact with you guys. Um, so far, everybody we've interacted with over Zoom and it can be any, any yeah, time fun. range it's of really fun. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. There's a couple different things we have on there. Um, a couple different classes that we have on there. Amphi, A-M-P-H-Y.com. And uh, some of the classes are free. Some of them, you know, they cost a little bit of money, but not a lot. Not too bad. And yeah, so we wanna, we wanna make sure you guys know about those. And so I think I have a, I did get that slide today, so maybe I can throw that up here. Well, Sean's grabbing that. We also just put, um, they're kind of doing a Halloween special on their there platform right now. So we have a new, it's not listed on this slide, but nope. we have a Halloween, like spooky, scary plants class that we just added. Yeah, yeah. 10, 10 scary plants. Just for a limited time. Yep, it's going to be fun. It's, uh, and you know, it's funny, Amphi does their, their pricing thing. We had it for $13 because, you know. Um, you know, that's it's kind of a scary number. Yeah, right? it can Some be considered can kind of woo thirteen. So it was supposed <laughs> to be for thirteen dollars, and uh, it didn't end up being. That's like twelve ninety or something. But you know, we tried to we tried to make it fun I that know, way too. Tried. But it's okay. So up on the screen, you'll see some of the, the these are not uh, all the classes we have on there that we're offering. But this is what we have. Just wanted to plug this real quick, show you what we got. Um, if uh, if you can't see this or we go through this too fast, just go to amphi.com and type in spoken garden in our our classes will be, they'll come up in the search. So I'm gonna turn that off and then we're back on here. Okay, so yeah, so, you know guys, it's, uh, what a fun topic this is. Oh, been this today. has been so much this fun. So I know, we fun. could just talk for another hour about bulbs and we could all research together and find things, but, you know, we just showed you a sample of what's out there and that's what the goal was today is just mm -hmm. to kind of, um, you know, just kind of alert you to, I guess, and bring to your attention that there are other bulbs beyond tulips and daffodils because a lot, <laughs> a lot of the marketing surrounds those types of bulbs, maybe alliums, maybe crocus and grape hyacinth, but mm -hmm. there are so many more out there that are so beautiful. Yeah. And don't be afraid to try some of these uh, new bulbs I out know. or even just plants in general. Just make sure that you take into consideration your hardiness zones, your USDA hardiness zones, and then make sure to take in consideration what uh, growing conditions you have in your garden that you can offer some of these plants so they can come and thrive in your garden. So if you if you do those two things, there's a lot more you know inside each one of those things. But if you do those two general things, you're going to be successful, and it's going to be so beautiful. Your garden's going to look I know, so I'm amazing. So excited. And so. if you beyond our class that we offer, if you need more planting tips for perennials this fall, mm. or dividing, or um, transplanting, or mulching, or we have, oh, yeah. um, we always forget to point this out. We have a new book this year that just came out in April at the end. I know a lot of you um, in our audience already have this book and we're so thankful that you mm -hmm. Thank purchased you. this and Thank you've you given us really good feedback. Um, we're still so kind of in shock that we're authors. Sometimes we- We got a book. We, ha we forget. We have a book. So it's meant for the first time gardener, all new gardeners, um, growing plants and flowers. And it's a it's a short book for all the information that we have packed in here, right? It's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, we wrote it for the, any first time gardener out there and it, it's, it, it goes from understanding just generally what plants are, how they grow, different kinds of plants out there into plants needs and then it goes into design uh, around your garden, uh, very basic for anybody out there that wants to do it. And then also uh, it progresses from there, uh, taking the inventory of your garden um, so you know what you have before mm -hmm. you go out and get your plants because that's important, yeah. right? 
And then there's also uh, how to plant specific plants, or the steps to do that. And then we go into uh, you know, mulching and seasonal pruning and different kinds of things to just start you thinking, to get you start thinking about those things in your garden so you can then go out and do them. I mean, we give you the basic skills to go do that. So that's, that's our book. Yay. And it's nutshell. orange, which I think is perfect for this season, right? It's orange. It's October. It's kind of like fall colors. It's fall. -ish. It's fall. And it's a great time to read and get ready for the spring. So especially for those of you that are new to gardening, it's mm -hmm. um, right now and going into winter is just reading is like it's the perfect time of year to, it is. to um, especially around here because it's it's getting stormy. It's getting know, cold it's and rainy. Good so good inside material to just get get snuggled to get snuggy and <laughs> Did you say snuggy? Snuggy, comfy, <laughs> oh, and uh, read Snuggy, comfy, cozy. Yes. That does sound like winter. That sounds nice. That does. I try. Oh, um, real quick. Speaking yeah. of gardening books, you guys, keep an eye out because starting next month in November and every month after that, we are working with our publisher to do a whole bunch of book giveaways. Yeah, cool Springs Press, Corda Homes. So we're so, so excited. So we're going to yep. be offering a different book every month from some of our favorite authors. Yep. Um, book giveaway. Probably on Instagram, maybe on YouTube, but keep your eye out on both platforms. Yes. Probably around mid-November. Yep. yep. That's so a little, stay tuned. Little hint. Yep. Hint, hint. So, you know, guys, with all that, we've said a lot today. We hope uh, you got some. You have some great information now about these unusual bulbs and just gardening in general. We really enjoyed talking with you and oh, so all fun. your comments and questions. So Super fun, awesome. you guys. Yeah. If so, you if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up so we can. Um, hear from you and real jingy we love you buddy um he's telling everybody go snack on that thumbs up button yes thank you so yes appreciate totally that. thanks buddy. a lot of you are signing off because it has been kind of a longer show yeah, so a little bit have a wonderful wonderful weekend and yep. rest of your week yep. be safe out there be safe go buy some bulbs and have fun in your garden watch some yep. football whatever's on your list eat good food eat good food yes or snacky food if you feel like it sure sure yeah um, have a great weekend. You Thanks guys. for being here, everybody. Thank you. Yay. We'll see you later. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.